Welcome to the Swedish Junior Hockey Podcast. Um, I'm your host, Jacob Dahlin. Uh, today, we're going to do something different. No guests today, but I thought it would be fitting. Uh, we're recording this kind of end of August, and kind of this is the beginning of season coming up here, and thought it'd be good to um, give a little bit of tutorial, um, maybe not a tutorial, but a, a dive into, for those who are listening, whether you're here in the United States, Canada, or in Europe, and really with the subject of uh, NCAA D1, uh, we'll utilize um, two things. So I want to put a big plug in for elite prospects who most of you are using, as well as uh, some of you um, have heard Glenn Heffron, uh, who was a guest on the podcast season one. I wish I remember the ac exact uh, episode. Glenn uh, is the commissioner of the USHL and for a long, long time has, has uh, published round Christmas time every year was called the Freshman Report, which we're going to take a deep dive into. Freshman Report, which is where are they coming from? Um, uh, their people, are, the players are coming in from uh, into the um, um, uh, NCAA D1 ranks, and we'll take a take a deep dive into that. So um, let's do this. I'm going to share my screen, and hopefully this works. Elite prospects open, and uh, for you that don't have the, um, um, of course you can use this on the free version. I have the it's twelve bucks a month. I think I use this every day, so twelve bucks a month is not um, too too high of a price. But I I uh, pulled up uh, NCAA, so NCAA, and for those who are new to NCAA, that is the division. Um, National C Collegiate Athletic Association, I think it stands for. Not actually sure. Everybody say NCAA. But it, if you have uh, NCAA Division One and Division Three, uh, this is the one we want to click on. Uh, <clears throat> so I, I wrote down some stats in here I thought would be pertinent for us to discuss here. So there's 64 teams divided up into w the Atlantic – Big Ten, CCHA, ECAC, Hockey East, Independent, and NCHC. So um, what we see here is, uh, of course, some of them are more uh, competitive than others. You have the ECAC, which is all the Ivy League schools. You have Hockey East, which is traditionally um, the strongest you see here, Frozen Four, Boston College, Boston University. Um, and then you have some of these that are independent that are that are not as strong um, uh, that are in here. Uh, so they're kind of broken down into different um, uh, different conferences here, similar to to the um, uh, how the um, football conferences are. But so let's say if we have 16, 1700 players in, uh, playing in um, NCAA. Um, <clears throat> so about how many players play on a team? So I know that there's um, there's restrictions. I don't know there's uh, some new rules coming out from NCAA uh, regarding red shirts and these type of things. So that'll be affecting the, the rosters. But let's say between 25 and 30 players um, uh, and, and goalies on a team. And of course traditionally you're going to see there's four years of eligibility and you can redshirt a year and then we had covid season so some of these kind of get affected in here but let's say if if um and and this is where i want to go to with with the glenn heffern report so where are they coming from and why are we talking about this is really uh, for those players that are not their primary goal may not necessarily be to talk to to play professionally, or if their goal is to play professionally, their the 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 path to pro, unless you're a superstar, the going directly is going to be through NCAA. Um, so when you talk to a lot of players, what's your goal as well? I want to play D1. And everybody then get in this discussion of how do I get there? So I think this is why we want to talk about it. So first of all, how many each year? So let's switch now to 
Glenn's report. Um, so I pulled this up from um, from Twitter. So if you go to Glenn Heffron, which is at Glenn Heffron, two, N, two N's in Glenn, Glenn and H-E-F-F-E-R-A-N, big plug in for his, um, he has a lot of, lot of um, uh, posts on Twitter or X. <clears throat> so this one was published, I think, in December of, um, yeah, December 24th of last year. This was last year's, um, so this is the latest one that he's published. And this is uh, generated from, from research. Um, uh, this is not his opinion. This is factual research. Uh, they're coming from the colleges and, and databases that he pulls from every year. And it's just, so he's been doing this for, I think, 10 years. And, um, and so this is uh, the last one. So what's interesting about this, 473 total players were freshmen. Uh, and that means incoming first-year players in NCAA D1. So this is not a, all of NCAA, does not include D3, does, then, does not include U Sports in, in uh, Canada. This is just NCAA D1. And this is how many freshmen are coming in. And now I'm going to flip through some of these so you can see there's this one, two, three, four, four different pages that he has. We're going to start with, um, uh, with this one, I think is the most interesting one. 473 total players. So where did they come from? 305 came from the U.S.-based junior leagues. Um 150 came from Canadian-based leagues, and 18 came from European junior leagues. So all of that, if you add those together, 305, 150, and 18 totals 473. So that makes sense, right? So if you take 473 times 4, that comes up with about 1,700, um, some or 1,800 players, which is all the players in, um, in NCAA. So if... You, so you got to think about the odds here. For, how do I become one of these 473, right? That's everybody's goal. I want to be one out of 473. I want to be one out of 16, 1700 players a place in the NCAA. That means you got to get in there first. That means your odds are one in 473, well, so to speak. You want to be one of those, those players. So how do I get there? So if you are playing in the European juniors, um, and this is the year before. So where did I come from the year prior to entering into NCAA? So this does not mean that there's only 18 Euro Euros that are playing in, in NCAA. It means that there are 18 Euros that were, were going straight from the European juniors into NCAA. So the majority of them, are then coming from the U.S. leagues. Second is going to be Canadian. So let's then look at where from juniors. And there's a lot of junior leagues that are touting different numbers in here. And, and we'll break that down a little bit as, as, as we can see. So the pre predominant place uh, that sends players to, to, to NCAA D1 is the U.S. Hockey League, USHL, number one place, about 40% of all the NCAA players are coming out of USHL, top league in the U.S. So what, what we don't see in here is going to be the OHL, WHL, and the Q, Tier 1 uh, or ju um, major juniors in, in Canada. Why is that? Because they're not eligible to play NCAA, right? So um, these are the leagues that they're feeding it. So 40% of all the players from USHL enter into uh, NCAA, and that is, I mean, 40% of the 473 are coming from USHL, which is 61% of, of the 305. Second highest in, in the U.S. Is, is the North American Hockey League with 111, which is 23%, which is a strong number, right? Now, uh, one note in here, I didn't pull the number, but if you pull the number of teams in NCAA in, in NAL versus USHL, um, there's a lot. Oh, here we go. Uh, total teams in the league. 
16 teams, so about half as, as many teams in the USHL, but a lot more. Uh, so this is, <laughs> he's already thinking about this, uh, Glenn, when he breaks this down. So about 12 players per team in the USHL make it in D1. Almost, so if you play in, in the USHL, very strong chance that you're going to be playing in, in, in the uh, NCAA. In the null, about four players per roster is per year is graduating from the null into NCAA. That totals, because there's 29 teams, that means 3.83 times 29 is 111. All right, what about NCDC? Tout for a lot of placements in uh, NCAA. Well, what these numbers are showing you, that they're not going from NCDC directly into NCAA, but what you'll see if you did a, a search, there's a lot of players that have that are playing in the NCAA that has played in the NCDC. Excuse me. So that means that they played in NCDC maybe made a jump into the null or maybe jumped into one of the Canadian leagues and then made it into NCAA. But if you are in the NCDC and you're hoping that next year you're going to play NCAA, the chance there is not very great. Four out of 473, which is 0.8% of all players in NCAA freshmen come from NCDC. Same thing, prep school and the and NA3, only one player from NA3. Now, as we know, NA3 feeds into Null to a certain degree that feeds then into to, um, uh, NCAA. All right, what about the Canadian-based leagues? So BCHL is the top 17.5% um, uh, of all players, just so 83 out of 473 is 17. So more than half of all Canadians are coming from the BCHL. Uh, there's 18. So this is 23-24. So I think this is going up now with all the, the, the teams from the AJ joining. Um, uh, 4.61 players per roster. So what we see there is you, you can make a strong argument. The BCHL is a better place than North American Hockey League because they place more players per team than the Null. Null puts more players, but there's more players per team in the BCHL. Um, now, whether that is going to go up or down, we'll see next year's report here for the 25, I mean, 24 25 season. The AJ, which again, this has changed since. Um, because the top teams from the AJ joined the BCHL, so you're going to see a, a shift there. 30, or about two players per team, are playing in the in in the uh, NCAA. Now, does that mean um, what you typically don't see is a whole lot of these guys from from the U.S. leagues going into U sports? But you see a lot of these Can Canadian based leagues that are. If you're not making NCAA, you're going to be playing in the U Sports or, or the Canadian um, university system. So um, OJHL is third or about one or three quarters of a player. Um, interesting here, too, number of NHL drafts, 46 top um, one for USHL, um, zero drafted players, but in the Canadian, so you see BCHL, AJ, and OJHL had some draft picks um, uh, as well. Uh, so what, what does that mean if I'm playing in one of these teams? Same thing here. You're probably, if you play in the MJ, CC, uh, Saskatchewan League, these are, uh, so in Ontario, um, you have both CCHL and OJHL, six uh, or 0.5 or 0.76, you see they're about equal here, OJHL and CCHL. Not a ton of them, 25 total. Um, not a ton of them, but what you do see a lot of them do is they may go from the CC into the BCHL, or you may go from CCHL into the North American Hockey League or the USHL, and then go into uh, the league, uh, in, in into NCAA. So if we then look at the Europeans, um, uh, 18 total players 
Uh, now, what do we see here? Total teams in the league, 202. That counts all of the Europeans. But, of course, there's a lot of them that don't go the NCAA route. Um, I'm not going to spend any time in here, really, but except for the what years are we talking about? We're really talking about six years. Uh, there's only one 06. This was the 23-24. Only one 06 that were a freshman. Um 29, 05s, 75, 04s. And then what we see, of course, here is that uh, the majority of the freshmen for the 23, 24s were 02s and 03s that have exhausted their junior eligibility. So if you're an 06, only one. So it'd be interesting to see who that player is, but it's probably got to be a stud that that may or may not have played any juniors Um and go straight into NCAA, um, like Macklin Celebrini, or I think he's an 05 that, that, um, you know, played in NTDP, I, th I think is where you played, uh, for a year or so in here. And very few, uh, oh ones are freshmen. So that means that if we, if we pull this from the 22, 22, 23, this probably would have been, uh, more in line of, of these numbers right in here. Um, so if you break this down into where are they coming from? So I'm in North Carolina. So how many North Carolina players were freshmen uh, in here? Let's go look at uh, uh, North Carolina. Zero. Out of the 281 U.S. players, where did they come from? Well, the, the, the biggest state, Massachusetts, New York, 33, Minnesota, 61. Uh, which province in Canadian born uh, out of the 139, Ontario, Alberta, British Columbia, which is interesting. So that means that some of these that are coming from, they're playing the BC are not necessarily come from British Columbia. They're coming from other providence, provinces to, to, to get in there. Out of the Europeans, uh, 20 Swedes, 11 Finland, uh, Finnish players, uh, total 53 foreign-born freshmen, uh, which you see there, if we, if we compare that to this one that showed 18 came from Europe, that, but there's 53 of the 53 foreign-born that are not Canadian or Americans. They came from these leagues, but that means that they've played somewhere in in the um, in in. in uh, U.S. or Canadian juniors before that. Um, let me see what else we can break this down into. Um, this is going to be the district, the USA Hockey districts that are producing it out of that 281. Where are they coming from? But I really think this is the... Oops, let me forward this on. Um this is the one that I think is the most um, important one. So to net all this out, if you want to play NCAA D1, I'm going to stop sharing. If you want to play NCAA, um, 473 spots that you're fighting for. Now we'll see if that's going to go up or down for this upcoming year. And to have the biggest chance... You want to get to the USHL. You want to get to the BCHL. You want to get to the NOL. Those three. Um, so 187. I'm going to bring my trusted calculator here. 187 from um, USHL plus 111 plus 83. That is 381 divided by 473. That's 80% of all the freshmen are coming from those three leagues. And then you have the rest right you have a little bit higher in the in the canadians but uh, you really want to be in those three leagues so what if i'm uh, you know i'm playing so what is not up here is us usphl i'm playing the usphl well you're not going to make the jump from usphl premier into ncaa d1 it's clear in here uh, but if you can make a jump from usphl premier to uh, maybe one of the Canadian juniors or maybe into null. Uh, that's the way to go. But I think it's healthy to be able to know what's the path to D1. And 
how do I position myself? Well, that means I need to be good enough to play in one of those leagues and be, let's be frank too, uh, if you have 4.6 players per team in the BCHL, that means that there's quite a few that are not, um, you know, uh, good enough to uh, to play D1, even if you play in the BCHL. Uh, not all USHL players play in the NCAA either, but I think that's the leagues that you want to be in. So I wanted to take that time, plug in, and thank you for to uh, Glenn Heffron, at Glenn Heffron on X. Uh, go in and look at that. And uh, we're going to probably talk about this again after Christmas when he publishes the, the next one as well. And um, hope uh, if you got any questions, I mean, you can go in and look. Uh, we're on YouTube. We are uh, on all the social media. Uh, shoot me some comments on uh, and reach out if you got any comments or questions. I'd be glad to an answer anything that you may come up with. Have a great one. Talk to you soon. Mm -hmm.